Hi, welcome to the 3D Pen Den. The last video was about five ways to make your letters 3D. But there's a bit more to this lettering business. You can approach your messages either one letter at a time, or one word at a time, or even a whole sentence at a time, whatever your message calls for. And stay around for the troubleshooting section, so you know what kind of trouble you can get yourself into. First, a short recap of the previous lettering video, because we are going to need to use all this info going further. The link is in the description in case you missed that one. writing anything, you can either proceed letter by letter or move it along by making whole word units or even sentence units. Let's start with making single letters first. Print out some font you like to make your message consistent. These particular letters are available in the 3D Pen Den Etsy store and they include some 3D Pen friendly features like these grids we will talk about later. This alphabet is formatted that it gives you the largest size that still fits onto the letter-sized paper. And since it's a printable PDF file, you can print it in any size needed for your particular project. Just remember, for any size over 100%, you will need to print in tile format and tape your letters together. Or you will lose bits of your widest letters like M's and W's. I will be working on a treated plexiglass surface. And for details on how to treat your plexi, refer to the two surface videos in the description. I like to tape a sheet protector pocket to my plexi to allow for a quick letter and background changes. This way your template remains fixed to your surface without having to tape each letter separately. These particular letters have a color-coded red and blue grid on them that can serve as a design element but also has a couple of other important functions that we will be talking about later in the troubleshooting section. I'm planning to make these letters from two layers with the fronts in different colors and all the backs in white. So I will use the blue grid lines for the colored layers and the red grid later for the white layers. This way, looking at the letters from the front, I will get a crisscross effect on each assembled letter, which might look kind of cool. But there are many other ways you can use these grids for your design. a really good bridging practice because you are going from top to bottom 
so you are not fighting with gravity and you are landing on solid surface, which is way easier than landing on a line in midair. Oops, the plastic just stuck to my hand and messed up the connection. That comes from being too lazy to tape it properly. Fortunately, it's easy enough to fix. Here I messed up again by moving things before the connection has cooled down. The moral of the story is don't be in a hurry and let the connections cool down completely before messing with it, especially the initial ones. This spot is hard to get to. It is possible but quite hard. I think I will leave these two alone. So do not feel like you have to connect the middle at every point. Instead, add more connections where it's easy to reach, like around the outside corners. You can make as many connections as you like, making the edges completely solid. Or not. birthday! Now for working a whole word at a time. Let's start with a name, perhaps a short name with a descender. First we'll extend the descender because the longer it is the more stable the name will be. And next you need to figure out some way for the letters to organically connect. You know, like cursive used to do. Once you are happy with it, print it out and stick it in your pocket. If you happen not to have access to some design software, you will have to work this out on a piece of paper. can stick in the plain grid. Yes, that one also comes with the alphabet set. ways you can handle the bending of the descender. One is working around the corner from your existing word. option is to make the whole world flat and bend it by strategically warming it with a wood burning tool. Just use super light touch. You don't want to cut it off.
Now, what do you do if you didn't make your descender long enough and it's still a bit wobbly? Or what do you do if your name happens to be, let's say, Rachel, and you don't have a descender? You just attach another layer, just like we did on the single letters. promised look at the trouble you can get yourself into. We already talk a little bit about stability. It's an important issue in 3D work. In fact, it's the third S for success if you remember the strategy video. While a single stroke standing in space can look quite magical, when you reach a certain size in your projects, the contour will not be able to stand up anymore by itself. Here the grid stops being just decorative, but it actually becomes a strengthening and stabilizing element. I'm working on the letter M in 150% size, so I think I'll need to go in both diagonal directions to keep things together for this one. Also, the taller your project is, the wider the base needs to be. Yes, there is an engineering lesson at every turn. Just saying, in case you happen to be a STEM teacher or a homeschooling parent. So, if you find the woodblock you usually use for the smaller size letters doesn't do the job and the thing tips way too easily, you need to either use something a bit wider for the bridging part or, alternatively, attach yet another layer to the letter to widen and strengthen it further. Now it stands safely. Another issue you don't have in 2D letters is keeping the counters in, namely the closed counters. You know, the little enclosed windows in some letters that make the letter fall apart when you take it off the surface. Oops! And now we lost the place where it should go too. So here's another job for your fill grids, besides stability, strength and decoration. Keeping the closed counters in their place. If you only make small letters, you don't really need to grid them for stability and strength, but you do need to find some alternative creative ways to keep your little windows in place. Another issue in 3D is that unless you are working with a font that has absolutely no curves, all your O's, G's, C's and S's will roll no matter how wide they are. But we already know how to fix that from the previous video. We can attach a stand or shadow to hold it up. Or 
another obvious way to solve this is to make the bottom of these just a little bit flat. The 3D pen Etsy alphabet has a double line on bottom of each round letter. You know me, I like options. So here is our G flat. Of course, if you decide to hang your banner, the stability is not an issue and you can just make the round letters as round as they should be. While I like the option of the letters just being able to stand anywhere, they also hang beautifully because the material is so light, it hangs on practically anything. You can have ghostly messages just floating in midair. The letters change their appearance viewed from different angles as you walk past them. Looks even cooler in real life. My studio just isn't big enough to really show it off from a proper distance. There is a lot of fun to be had with lettering and it is a perfect initial project to get you used to working with 3D pen. It can start as simple as making one number for the middle of your birthday cake. But that will have to be another video. Until then, go and write something.